Here are the solutions for perfect problem four. We're given two different functions. Um, in parts one and two, we're asked to find the derivative of the first function. So for one, really what I want to find is f prime of x. Um, and what it said, well, here's f of x, so take that derivative. Well, it looks like a product to me, so it's tempting to use the product rule. However, it says do it without using the product rule. Okay, if I'm going to find this derivative without using the product rule, I better be able to rewrite x squared plus 2x plus 1 times 3x squared minus 4x minus 2. Um, so it's not written as a product. Well, how do you do that? It's kind of the analog to FOIL. You multiply these two polynomials out together. Um, kind of a pain to multiply a trinomial by a trinomial. There's a box method way of doing this, a few different ways. Um, since this is a calculus class, I'm going to focus mostly on what you get rather than the algebra. Um, if you multiply this times this um, and combine like terms, we will end up with 3x to the fourth power plus 2x cubed minus 7x squared minus 8x minus 2. So the point that I want to make is I haven't done any calculus at all. All I did was algebra on the thing that I will eventually do calculus on. Rather than think about taking this derivative, figure out what this is equal to and take that derivative. Why is that better? Because this derivative is easier to take than this derivative. The way you can take this derivative is just by applying some 3.1 rules, saying the derivative of a sum of a bunch of things is the sum of those individual derivatives. So the derivative of 3x to the fourth power, well, that's the same as 3 times the derivative of x to the fourth power. The derivative of x to the fourth power is 4x cubed. So 3 times 4x cubed is 12x cubed. And similarly, the derivative of the second term there is 6x squared. And then we get minus 14x to the 1 power minus 8. This right here is the derivative of, it's f prime of x. It's the derivative of f. Um, that wasn't too bad. I think in this case, it might have been easier to figure this out without using the product rule. Of course, that's dependent on one thing, being able to go from this step to this step. Kind of how good is your algebra? So what we're now going to do solve this problem a different way. Um, instead of multiplying these two polynomials out, what we'll see is once we learn the product rule, we have the machinery to take this derivative directly. So the derivative of x squared plus 2x plus 1 times 3x squared minus 4x minus 2. Well, if I apply the product rule, what I have written up here, it says anytime you're trying to take the derivative of two functions being multiplied together, take the derivative of the first one. So figure out what the derivative of x squared plus 2x plus 1 is. And then after you do that, multiply that by, see it looks like g. So whatever the second thing is, in this case 3x squared minus 4x minus 2. Then you're not done, we've only done this part of the formula. To that you need to add the derivative of g. All right, g prime here. The derivative of g is the derivative of 3x squared minus 4x minus 2. And you're still not done because then after we figure that out, we'll have to multiply that by f for this f right here. The thing that we're calling f is x squared plus 2x plus 1. Um, don't confuse these f and g with this f and this g. Um, the product rule is calling the first thing of the two that you're multiplying together f. So that's what I mean by these f's here. Um, so what I've done is I've changed one derivative into two derivatives. Which sounds bad, but it's actually good because these derivatives are a little easier to take. I can take the derivative of x squared plus 2x plus 1 um, just by applying the, the same way I took the derivative up here when I was asked to take the derivative of a polynomial. The derivative of x squared plus 2x plus 1 is just 2x plus 2. And then I'll just copy 3x squared minus 4x minus 2. Right, I took the derivative of this first one, but this second one I'm not taking any derivatives of. Just leave it alone. This is g, not g prime. Copy this right here. And then add to that the derivative of g, this derivative right here, which looks to me to be 6x minus 4 multiplied by f, x squared plus 2x plus 1. This is the derivative. I'm done with the calculus at this stage. This is done. But I want to go further because it doesn't look like this. 
right? Hopefully I get the same answer. I'm solving for the same thing, F prime. Hopefully this is the same as this. To make sure it's equal, I gotta multiply out these polynomials and combine like terms. Um, 2x plus two times 3x squared minus 4x minus two. If you take two, multiply each of these two terms by each of these three terms, what you'll end up with is 6x cubed minus 2x squared minus 12x minus four. That's this times this. And then to that you want to add this product, 6x minus 4 times x squared plus 2x plus 1. And again, foil that all out, and you get 6x cubed plus 8x squared uh, minus 2x minus 4. And so now, finally, if I combine like terms, 6x cubed and 6x cubed is 12x cubed negative 2x squared and positive 8x squared nets out to positive 6x squared. Negative 12x minus two more x gives me minus 14x minus four minus four is minus eight. And if I did all my algebra perfectly, I'll have the same answer here and here. Uh, they look pretty similar, yep, look the same to me. Cool, call that done. Two different ways to find the derivative of f. Now let's do that again except instead of solving for the derivative of f twice, let's solve for the derivative of g twice. All right, well, g prime of x is just saying, take the derivative of that thing, this function, in this case, 3x plus, instead of the square root of x, I'm gonna write x to the 1 half power. I'm gonna use exponent notation instead of radical notation, because it'll work out nicer when later on I have to use the power rule. Um, the fourth root of x is x to the one fourth power. The cubed root of x is x to the one third power. So really it's this derivative that I'm trying to take, which it looks like a quotient, kind of like this looks like a product, but in part three, just like in part one, I'm not supposed to use the product of the quotient rule. So what I gotta do is figure out a way to rewrite this so it's not a quotient. Unfortunately, you can do that. There's kind of some exponent rules. When you have a sum of things divided by one term, you can take each term on the top divided by the term on the bottom. 3x divided by x to the 1 third is 3x to the 2 thirds power. The exponent rule going on there is this is x to the 1 minus 1 third. When you're dividing powers, you subtract the exponents. x to the 1 half divided by x to the 1 third is x to the 1 half minus 1 third. 1 half minus 1 third, if you haven't looked at fractions in a while, isn't that easy. Um, to subtract fractions, you need a common denominator. At least common denominator in this case is six. So this is three sixths, this is two sixths. Three sixths minus two sixths. Sounds like one sixth to me. Oh, and then for my x's, or for my last term here, at least common denominator would be 12 if I want to do one fourth minus one third. Um, so this is three twelfths, this is four twelfths. Three twelfths minus four twelfths is negative one. I'm not doing calculus, this is algebra, going from here to here. I'm just rewriting the problem. I'm saying I don't wanna take this derivative, it looks too hard. So I'm gonna do some algebra, some pretty hard algebra, to make the derivative easier, to make the calculus part easier. Sometimes you'll be able to do that, sometimes you won't. So it's worth learning the quotient rule also, but in cases where you can do algebra to make the calculus easier, it's often worth it. So what I now wanna do is take this derivative. This is just a polynomial, so I can take the derivative of each term individually. The derivative of the first term, if I use the power rule, I'll bring the two-thirds down in front. Three times two-thirds is just two. And two-thirds minus one is negative one-third. Take the one-sixth and bring it down in front. One-sixth minus one is negative five-sixths. Um, and then for my last term, I got negative two. Um, taking the derivative of this thing, Sorry, I should be careful there. Negative 1 12th times negative 2, and negative times a negative is a positive. 2 times 1 12th is 2 twelfths, which can reduce to 1 sixth. So I got positive 1 sixth x raised up to negative 1 12th minus 1 is negative 1 12th minus 12 twelfths, which is negative 13 twelfths. Um, this right here is the right answer. I'm done with all the calculus. What I'm now going to do is find g prime using a different method, namely the quotient rule. And I'll get something that looks a lot different than this. And then I'll do some algebra to show that this, in fact, is the same as my answer from part four. 
I'm going to leave a little bit of room because it might be easier to manipulate this algebraically than manipulating my answer to part four. So let's put this on hold for now, um, figure out the derivative another way, and then figure out how to say that this is the same as my answer here in part four. I want to take this derivative, same thing, the derivative of 3x plus x to the 1 half minus 2x to the 1 fourth divided by x to the 1 third. Same question as above, but that's kind of where the similarities end. Um, above, I said, I don't want to take the derivative of a quotient. I know I'd have to use the quotient rule, and that seems hard. And furthermore, it said, don't use the quotient rule. In part four, it says, use the quotient rule. So I don't want to do algebra to simplify this and make my derivative easier to take. I want to take the derivative directly, exactly how it's written right now. And so the way I do that is I reference my, reference my quotient rule up here. It says, anytime you're taking the derivative of a quotient of two functions, this is how you do it. So I have to take the derivative of the function up top. That's the f prime in this formula. So the function up top is 3x plus x to the 1 half minus, well, I'll write it out. It'll be the derivative of 3x plus x to the 1 half minus 2x to the 1 fourth. Now hopefully I can figure that out. And once I do figure that out, I'll then take that and multiply it by the, or by the function on the bottom, x to the 1 third. That's the g in f prime g. Then I'm not done, I have to subtract g prime f. So I have to subtract the derivative of that function on the bottom, which maybe you can figure that out just by looking at it. But for now, I'm going to say the derivative of that thing and save figuring it out for the next step. And then once you do that, multiply it by f, right? g prime f. f is the thing up top. In this case, it's 3x plus x to the 1 half minus 2x to the 1 fourth. And this is where a lot of people stop. You're not done. Don't forget, you have to divide by the thing on the bottom, x to the 1 third in this case, squared. Why x to the 1 third squared? Let's go up to your quotient rule, g squared on the bottom. g is the thing on the bottom. What I've done is I said, all right, I got a hard derivative that I got to take. Let's break that up. Maybe make more work. I have to figure out two derivatives. But each of those individual derivatives are easier to take than this big messy derivative. So what I want to do is look at this huge fraction here and start simplifying stuff. The derivative of 3x plus x to the 1 half minus 2x to the 1 fourth, that's a polynomial. I can take the derivative of polynomials. I get 3 plus 1 half x to the negative 1 half um, minus 1 half x to the negative 3 fourths. Where those come from, um, I think this last term is the one that's the trickiest. You take this 1 fourth and multiply it times negative 2. You get negative 2 fourths, which can be written as negative 1 half. And then 1 fourth minus 1 is negative 3 fourths. So this derivative is here. Now that I have that figured out, I can multiply it by x to the 1 third. And then from that, I will subtract the derivative of x to the 1 third, which is 1 third x to the negative 2 thirds. 1 third minus 1 is negative 2 thirds. Um, and that, now that I have that figured out, I can multiply it by 3x times x to the 1 half minus 2x to the 1 fourth. And once I multiply those all out and combine like terms, I'll divide the whole thing by x to the 1 third squared. When you have exponents raised up to exponents, you multiply these. 1 third times 2 is 2 thirds. Done with the calculus at this step right here. Now what I want to prove to you is this big ugly fraction is the same as this nice pretty polynomial. Whew, sounds like a lot of work. Um, but I guess if I'm asking you to do it, I should do it. So the first thing I would do is let's get rid of parentheses. Let's take this x to the 1 third and distribute it to these three terms up top. Um, if you do that, you'll end up with 3x to the 1 third plus 1 half x to the what, negative 1 sixth uh, minus 1 half x to the negative 5 twelfths. Um, where those exponents came from was negative one half plus one third is negative one sixth. Get a common denominator and add. Negative three fourths plus one third is negative five twelfths. These three terms give me these. And then from that, I want to subtract one third x to the negative two thirds times these guys. I'm going to distribute this in. 
one third x to the negative two thirds times three x times, well, negative one third x to the negative two thirds times three x. Let's keep that negative with it. It is negative one x to the one third power. Negative one third x to the negative two thirds times x to the one half would be negative one third x to the negative one sixth. Again, common denominator, add the exponents. And then negative one third times negative two gives me positive two thirds. I think I might be able to squeeze this in here. Um, and then for the exponent, negative two thirds plus one fourth is negative five twelfths. That's all divided by x to the two thirds. Looks hopeless. Doesn't look like this thing is ever gonna look like this thing. But I think this is where things are at its worst. I can now combine like terms. I got three of these x to the one third things, and I got negative one of these x to the one third things. So what I really have is two of these x to the one third things. I got one half of these x to the negative one sixth things, and I got negative one third of these x to the negative one sixth things. So really I have one half minus one third, which is one sixth, which you didn't think you'd be doing this much work with fractions in a calculus class, x to the negative one sixth. Um, and then finally, negative one half plus two thirds is negative three sixths plus four sixths, which is positive one sixth, x to the negative five twelfths. You're not done, you still got this x to the two thirds on the bottom. But what I can now do is the way you divide x to the one third and x to the two thirds is you do x to the one third minus two thirds. So I got two x to the one third minus two thirds is negative one third. I got one sixth x Negative one sixth minus two thirds is negative one sixth minus four sixths, which is negative five sixths. And then I got one sixth, negative five twelfths minus two thirds is negative five twelfths minus eight thirds, which is negative 13 twelfths. And hopefully, I really, really hope that's gonna be the same as this. It looks like it is, thank God, because I didn't wanna do any more with fractions. What I ended up with is the same thing from part three as I got in part four. So I can finally end this kind of long problem um, and leave it there. So that's the end of this perfect problem.